There's been busloads of people that are leaving. Um, if you, I don't know if we can get those, Doug. And there's some ambulances. Some people have collapsed. We don't know if they were exhaustion or they were in other um, hotels and, and apartments right nearby that were staying here because they were evacuated overnight. They have been taken uh, to other shelters, we're hearing. Um, food has come in for the day. But um, every few minutes, we're running into people that are coming here uh, just tear-filled, worrying about their families, uh, fam family members or friends. Um, it is a very active scene here uh, since we've gotten here all day and changing all the time. We spoke with the uh, Rabbi Lipsker from the Shul of Bal Harbor, who is, uh, knows many, many people in the building. He says that uh, he's trying to pray to God that this uh, will, you know, this will, few people will come out that he knows that he that they will be alive and well, but it is looking pretty dim that they have not heard from these people in this building, in this building. So right now it's a lot of sitting around and waiting. They are not announcing any names as of yet. Earlier they said they were, but there was some confusion with that, and they actually have just named the people that were safe so far, and those were the names that they knew prior. So right now, no announcements, but um, a lot of nerves back here. Lisa, we have been in this town a long time. Of course, we have seen South Florida come together in moments of crisis like this, and it seems to me that that's exactly what you're seeing there. A lot of people there just showing up, looking for a way to help. Uh, we heard of uh, the Miami Heat's Tyler Hero there, along with assistant coach Chris Quinn there, just to pass out water. Can you describe uh, that atmosphere there and how people are just showing up, trying to find a way to help? bottles of water, pizzas, food. I've seen big bags of sheets and towels. I've seen uh, people coming in and out. They're careful also who they're letting in and out, but if the, those that are getting through, I have so many friends and family members myself who are texting me, people that I know that now are seeing me on the air. Hey, what can we do to help? What do they need? What they? Right now, we don't actually know because we're not sure where they're going. They're keeping us very separated, as you can see, but some of the people are coming up to us themselves. Um, the woman that we have the soundbite with, I'm not sure that we're going to be able to get that on for now, but um Oh, okay. So I'm going to actually send that. That is Yubi um, Pettingill, and she is the aunt of this family that I showed you the picture of earlier that is missing this entire family. Let's go to her sound. And they were on the side that collapsed? Yes, 10th floor, looking at the beach. And you haven't heard anything? No. Oh, no. And you haven't seen them in the hospital or anything? No word? No, they sent me here. And they're all missing? They're all missing. That only God is the one who saved them. So you never lose hope. And I, I'm not losing my hope. She is not losing her hope. She went inside to try to get kind of get in line where she could find out because the, the when she went to the active site where the building is just a few blocks down, we, we can actually see it if I lean over. There's the, the lights are at back there. Um, she said they're telling her everybody that's looking for family members to come here. So this is really like the, the distribution center of being able to tell people what's going on, except those names are not announced. You know, they're digging through rubble, as, as Jim and others have reported. You know, this is this is going to be a long search. This is not going to happen very quickly. So I think it's going to be a long road for these people who are struggling so much. But as you said, Jim Barry, um, it is it is heartwarming to see this community and people coming in from all over. What can I do? Oh, my gosh, how can I help? And that's what it's all about, especially in times like these, to get back and give in. So um, I think it's just a matter of staying in touch. And as we hear, hear more information on what these people need, because so many people are displaced, not only the building itself, but the neighbors as well, uh, we'll be able to tell you that. So we'll have more from you a little later on. Well, Lisa, I just want to clarify that woman that we just heard from. You said that she is somehow related to the woman who is the sister-in-law of the president of Paraguay. Can you sort of explain that to us one more time just so we understand the connection? Because truly an international community, a very diverse community, so people from all over the world are really interested in what is happening here right now in Surfside. Of course, let me explain that because I got a little mixed up when the sound wasn't quite ready at the time. So her name is Yubi Pettingil, and she has a nephew. That is her nephew in the picture right there, and that is uh, his wife. And there are three little, three little children who are visiting um, for vacation here. And the entire, whoops, there we go, got it. Okay, the entire family is missing. So her nephew, this woman who is the sister-in-law of the president of Paraguay, and their three children are missing at this time. She is scared to death, but she is holding out hope and prayer that they will find them. Uh, apparently, um, the president, uh, apparently, the president of Paraguay, I'm hearing, might be coming himself.
myself. I know um, the the grandparents are all flying in. She said on a private jet from Paraguay, um, and to hope they can find this uh, beautiful family, as well as all of the families that people are. So that there's there's single. I mean, there's so many different people that we've been hearing with. Another another per person came up to me and she said she knows two three people, a couple, and the, and on the fourth floor, another one on the third floor, and she hasn't heard from any of them. And one of the actually is one person is um, her husband's out of town. She's by herself. None of these cell phones are being answered, and so these, this is just continuing to happen story after story and everybody being sent here. So earlier when we spoke with you, you touched on the fact that the Surfside community is a uh, heavily Orthodox Jewish community. A lot of camaraderie around the shul, specifically the shul of Bar Harbor. The, the rabbi there has been offering to sort of be a, a clearinghouse for information. I know you mentioned that the wife of one man who's missing said, call the shul of Bar Harbor if you have any other information. But to speak to the point of the, the demographics of that particular area, this is coming to us from the Times of Israel. It is reporting that 20 Jews, some with Israeli citizenship, are among those missing in the Surfside building collapse. They say, according to the Consul General, who spoke to media there in Israel, uh, he said apparently these are American residents, but some of their families are waiting for some bad news. I know you said that, that the rabbis were going there to the Family Reunification Center to help out. Uh, what else are you seeing from them and how people can perhaps reach out to those organizations to lend a helping hand in case the best idea is not going actually to that center right now? Yes, I spoke to Dr. I, I spoke to uh, Rabbi Lipsker moments ago, and we're going to send that back to you later on. And he came here to lend his support. He has, says he knows many, many people who are inside that building. I have friends uh, of ours that know uh, four cousins um, that were that are of uh, Orthodox Jewish faith that are in that building as well, and other than just in the Jewish community. Um, Rabbi Lipsker is here to lend support. He um, has said anybody can contact the Shul of Bal Harbor um, to contact him and tried to connect, but right now he is not getting in any information. Um, I think these people are going to be needing a lot of things. I mean, first of all, obviously support and love and, and physical things as well. Right now it's about, it looks like people are taking care of the people who are inside this building as far as food and necessities, but this is going to be a long road, sadly. It's, it's, it's a really, really tough day, and so many tears have been shed of people just running by us. And it's that hard line of talking to them and wanting to ask questions and finding out what's going on and really and being intrusive and it's like one of the hardest things that that we can do as reporters is is you know trying to see if they want to talk because some of these people do and others have asked us to you know please stay away that they're in grief and they have a feeling that they've really lost their loved ones today so it is a really really hard day here and that is understandable certainly Lisa thank you so much for uh, putting it on perspective for us and we certainly hope for the best for everyone who is looking for loved ones holding out hope that they will get some good news